Frankenstein is a famous novel written by Mary Shelley in 1818 as part of a scary story competition between her and two friends. One of the other stories was the first English vampire novel. I wonder who won the competition. Having the pick between vampires and Frankenstein is a tough call. Argofomp book review. Argofomp book review. Part 1. The book begins with a series of letters from Captain Walton, who's exploring the Arctic. His ship gets blocked in by ice, and he's surprised to find a man on a sledge in this remote territory where no humans live. The stranger introduces himself as Victor Frankenstein. The two men become friends, and Frankenstein tells his life story. Frankenstein is from Geneva. Thanks to a faulty education, he grows up studying ancient scientists, whose beliefs and systems are thousands of years out of date. He enters college and struggles to adjust to modern science. The story really gets started in Chapter 3, which is 40 pages in. Frankenstein discovers a way to bestow life on anything. He decides to create a human. He works at night getting body parts from slaughterhouses and dissection rooms. To speed up the process, he's forced to make a giant-sized human 8 feet tall. After two years of feverish work, everything is ready. Frankenstein brings the creature to life, only something goes terribly wrong. Instead of being handsome, the creature is a hideous monster. It has yellow skin, visible blood vessels, pale eyes, and straight black lips. Frankenstein is so terrified that he runs away. When he comes back the next day, the monster has gone. Frankenstein takes a few months to recover with his best friend, then he returns to his normal college life. I have to say, I was disappointed by this. The monster is only around for half a page? But there were 15 pages about Frankenstein's educational preferences. Talk about focusing on the wrong thing. At the very least, Frankenstein should have made an attempt to figure out what happened to the monster. Towards the end of college, Frankenstein gets a letter from home, saying his younger brother William was killed. Frankenstein rushes home. Along the way, he catches sight of the monster in the woods. Frankenstein is immediately convinced that the monster is the murderer. He is correct, but it's definitely jumping to conclusions to assume someone is a killer just because they're ugly, and they were seen somewhat close to a crime scene a week afterwards. Frankenstein's grief and sorrow is immeasurable, and it only increases when an innocent servant is accused. The trial is a farce, and she is unjustly condemned to death. After she gives a false confession, only Frankenstein and his beloved cousin Elizabeth believe in her innocence. Part 2. Frankenstein goes on another vacation to recuperate his mental health. The monster approaches him near a mountain, in biblical doth the language become, as the lowly wretch beseeches its creator for mercy. Yet the mighty Frankenstein bestoweth not his eye of favor upon the work of his hands. The eloquent monster explains what happened to him the past few years. He stumbled into the woods and lived there for a long time, learning how to use his eyes and body in the same way that it takes a baby months to learn how to see and move on its own. Fortunately for the creature, he can survive in harsh temperatures on very little food. The creature is delighted to discover fire and human food, but he is discouraged that humans scream and run away whenever he approaches. In time, he finds a family made of an old blind man and two children. The creature watches them from a distance. He learns about feelings and words from them. In time, a foreign woman named Safi joins the family. They teach her how to read and speak French, which is a major help in the creature's intellectual development. The creature becomes desolate, knowing that he's not human, he's alone and forsaken. Eventually, he approaches the blind man and starts a conversation. Things go well until the rest of the family arrives. The women are horrified. The son throws the creature to the ground and attempts to beat him to death. The family is so disgusted, they immediately sell the house and escape. 
I feel really bad for the creature, because nobody ever tries to talk to him. Everyone either runs away or tries to murder him on sight. Even when he saves a small child from drowning in a river, the parents react with murderous anger, not gratitude. Maybe the creature should have tried a disguise that covers his whole head, like the Invisible Man did. The creature is convinced that he will never be accepted by humanity. He finds some of Frankenstein's diary pages in his coat pocket. He decides to get revenge on Frankenstein for creating him and dooming him to a cursed existence. That's why the creature killed Frankenstein's brother and framed a servant for it. The creature's story ends here. He asks Frankenstein to relieve his unbearable isolation by creating a wife for him. Frankenstein refuses at first, but the creature reasons with him until he's convinced it's the right thing to do. Part 3. For whatever reason, Frankenstein cannot duplicate the act of creating life without first consulting some British scientists. He plans a two-year journey to England, and he promises to marry Elizabeth when he returns home. The journey is quite enjoyable. On a remote Scottish island, he begins creating the creature's bride. Frankenstein realizes that this second creation could be a disaster that backfires terribly. The two creatures could create a race of monsters that destroys all of humanity. Frankenstein purposely destroys his work. The monster urges him to continue, but he refuses. I find it amazing the monster secretly followed Frankenstein in London for months. I thought he was unable to go anywhere without creating a major scene. The monster threatens to get revenge on Frankenstein's wedding night. More immediately, the monster kills Frankenstein's best friend. Frankenstein is framed for the murder. It's three months before a trial finds him innocent, since he was on another island when the murder occurred. Frankenstein returns home and prepares to marry Elizabeth. He dreads the thought of the monster's return, and he takes measures to protect himself. Frankenstein is so sure the monster will attack him, He's caught by surprise when the monster attacks Elizabeth instead. The monster kills her. Frankenstein vows he's going to kill the monster, no matter what it takes. He chases the monster all over the world. The narration switches back to Captain Walton in the Arctic. Frankenstein makes numerous edits to the story we just read before he dies. Walton speaks with the monster at Frankenstein's coffin. The monster is overcome with grief yet still believes it suffered far more than Frankenstein ever did. Walton has no pity to spare for the creature. The creature resolves to go to the North Pole and kill himself in a fire, so no one can examine his remains and build another monster like him. The end. Post-book follow-up. This is certainly a horror novel dripping with melancholy. Almost any line can be isolated and read in a scary voice, to great effect. It has deep themes about creation, children, isolation, and monstrosity. In many places, the creature is far less of a monster than Frankenstein is, and I think all the tragedy could have been avoided if someone had shown the creature a little kindness. It's a shame that the creature is usually portrayed as a mumbling monster when he's quite eloquent and thoughtful. Likewise, Frankenstein is usually portrayed as a mad scientist, when he is far more emotional here. There is debate as to what to call the creature. Frankenstein only calls it creature, monster, or devil. I think it's reasonable to assume he would give the monster the last name of Frankenstein, just like he'd do if he had any natural-born children. So, yeah, I think it's fair to call the creature Frankenstein. That's what most people call him, anyway. Though the book is well-written at all times, a lot of it is slow-paced and boring. I complain that it is 40 pages before the story actually starts. I'm unsurprised to learn the author originally planned to start the story there, at the creation of the monster. That would have been a much better opening. The penchant for chasing tangents continues throughout the book, and there are plenty of parts which I'm sure get skipped over in most adaptations. Take the blind man's family. We get to hear their entire backstory, and while it's quite interesting, it's not relevant. I most like the scenes where Frankenstein conversed with the creature, 
and so I wish there was more of that in the novel. The two of them only talk once, outside of the creature telling his life story. I could definitely see another version of the story where the creature regularly visits Frankenstein. Overall, it's a great book which definitely makes you think. Still, I think it would be much better if it was two volumes long, not three. I give Frankenstein a 6 out of 10.